Because I do think that you're very good at the go. Ash. I am. I am. <laughs> it's a weird compliment to I've give somebody. I've been doing it a long time. But I have peed on my shoes. I've peed on my pants. I've had it run down <laughs> towards my shoes because I didn't check the slope. Mm-hmm. This is the Exploring the National Parks podcast with Dirt in My Shoes. My name is Ash, and I'm a former park ranger and the founder of Dirt in My Shoes. I think that the parks are best seen from the trail, and I'm here to make national park trip planning easy. And I'm John. I carry the kids on the trails, I tell stories, and notice all the things that Ash doesn't care about much, like birds. Join us as we show you around America's spectacular national parks. We're sharing our favorite places, fun facts, adventures, and misadventures. And we'll even throw in a little trip planning. Let's start exploring. Okay, so I learned something distressing the other day, and I'm very upset about this. Oh, geez. Okay, so... Oftentimes when we're doing these podcast episodes, especially like we have to pay attention to how we pronounce the names of places and stuff. And it can cause some issues, (laughs) especially on YouTube. My gosh, like people are just always like, that's not how you say it. And I'm like, I'm just doing my best here. Okay. (laughs) In Utah, we have so many things we pronounce super weird. And so around the country. It's the same thing. So like the national parks in Washington, a lot of their names are like native names Mm -hmm. that are really hard to pronounce. Right. Like Ohana Pakash, like stuff like that. Skagit, like people just don't know how to pronounce those. Puyallup or whatever. Puyallup. (laughs) Puyallup. I mean, we have a whole episode that talks about how we pronounce the Appalachian Trail instead of Appalachian, right? Okay. So I understand all this. Well, my wonderful content manager, Carrie, who works on all my blog posts with me, she's amazing. I love her to death. She listens to the podcast and she was listening to one of the episodes and she messages me and she goes, so it's not actually Isle Royale National Park. Which is weird. Which is because it's weird. totally spelled that yes. way. Yes. So that's like <laughs> not one that I would think that I was mispronouncing. She goes, Us Michiganders call it Isle Royal, Mm -hmm. like the royal family, but it has an E on the end. So she's (laughs) like, it's not like Casino Royale. It's like the royal family. And I'm like, why would I ever think to say that word (laughs) without the E on the end? Why would I ever say royal? Mm -hmm. So I'm very upset. They should take off the E. I just am really disappointed with Michigan right now. (laughs) I feel like the E should not be there. Yeah. There's all these other hard words. I mean, we just did some Hawaii episodes. We're mm-hmm. pronouncing Hawaiian names, stuff like that. And so it's just many like, vowels. You know what? We're getting as close as we can. And then you have a very straightforward Isle Royale. That is how it is spelled. <laughs> that is how it should be said. I'm just really upset by this. Yeah, I understand where you're coming from. But at the same time. What a cool little quirk. No, (laughs) no. (laughs) So now I have to reconvince. Like, we haven't been there. We've tried to go. We had to cancel our trip because John had to get back surgery. So I've never been there. And now I know. But I'm just very disappointed in Michigan. Yeah. So I just wanted to put that out there. Now I know. Sorry. It's Isle Royal National Park. But we promise... Those of you who are from Michigan or the surrounding area, it's not personal. It's just business. I don't know. It's feeling kind of personal. <laughs> also, thanks to the individual who pointed it out. I know. Carrie's the best. Thanks, she, Carrie. I know. And she did it so nicely, too. Like She's like, probably knew that I hate when people correct my pronunciation because I'm like, I'm just doing my best, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did great. Yep. But it's Isle Royal. So now we all know. know. Yeah. If you didn't know, now you know. And if Isle you didn't Royal. know that there was a national park in Michigan, now you know. <laughs> yeah. Because there's not that many back in that part of the country. Exactly. So I just wanted to get that out there. Now we get to jump into a topic that I'm actually kind of excited about that. <laughs> Is that weird <laughs> that I'm like excited to talk about this? I've had so many questions from people. Mm-hmm. They'll just like message me and be like, 
hey, Ash, (laughs) how do you go to the bathroom while you're out hiking? Yes. And I'm like, I just feel like it will be easier to talk about in a podcast episode, even though it feels a little bit like we're exposing things that we don't really (laughs) want to talk about. I just have to say, this episode, there might be a, a small amount of potty humor. Oh, I'm sure. I have been so nervous about what John has prepared. <laughs> oh, I've got some good stuff. This will be fun. On my notes, all it says is peeing. That's what it's saved <laughs> under. So here we go. We're jumping into this is a question that I get a lot. I'm guessing, John, they probably don't really want your input because we all know that it's much easier for men to pee in the woods. I am going to push back a little bit. No, it's been all women who have asked me, what do you do, Ash? Because (laughs) it's kind of a point of anxiety for some people. Well, I think, okay. So in my mind, women may think that men have it easy in the woods when it comes to going to the bathroom. And it all depends on the number you're talking about. I'm talking about one. Okay. Number one. We all kind of have to poop the same. Yes. Number two is the great equalizer. Yes. Okay, is definitely the great equalizer. But relative to the ladies, if you're talking about going numero uno, you are absolutely correct. But that doesn't mean that there aren't best practices. And so I have some best practices that I'd like to share eventually. I think you would probably like to start. Yes. So we're talking about how to pee and poop when you're out hiking, if you're out on the trail or if you're backpacking or whatever. Like sometimes you just have to go. I will say if it's a couple hours hike, I hold it (laughs) most of the time. (laughs) But I mean, I've been doing this for so long. It really is like second nature to me to just go squat behind a tree and do my business. But I do still like it's like you're a very uh, good squatter. (laughs) Listen, so I was looking up how other people pee because you kind of wonder. I, I want to re- see your search history. I feel, I, feel, I feel pretty confident in my setup. It works really well for me. But so I was looking it up and I was like, I do like I'm really good at squatting. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's like the best thing you can do to prepare yourself to pee in the woods. If you're a woman is get good at squats. OK. And you need to be able to hold a squat for a minute. Mm hmm. And so I was looking and I was trying to find pictures of like the type of squat that I do while I'm peeing so that I could like explain to people better. And what I found was there's like 45 different kinds of squats. Oh my gosh. And they all look the same to me. Are you talking about like exercise squats? Yeah. Oh, this specific version of a squat to get these muscles. Exactly. (laughs) I was trying to go like really helpful today. Right. But I couldn't find the squat that I do. I'm assuming it's a deep squat. It's really deep. But the thing is you have to keep your feet like very far forward and your butt very far back. Mm -hmm. Because if you do not, you pee in your pants or you pee on your shoes. Mm -hmm. So this is very important. Like you, it's a specific, it's probably not even really an exercise squat. My form is probably terrible. But it works really well. Right. So it's not knees over toes. No, (laughs) that's a bad idea. (laughs) Because then that puts your butt right in between your feet. Right. And that's when even if you don't get it in your shoes, it will splash. Right. So. So like to point out. So this like we talked about, number two is the great equalizer. This is valuable for the men to listen to as well, to figure out the squatting Right, but I didn't actually figure out what kind of squat I do. So basically, (laughs) you're just, you're trying to squat with your butt as far back as you can Mm -hmm. if you're a woman. And if you need help, you can find a tree or a rock that you can kind of lean your body on. Mm -hmm. But just like get your feet as far forward as you can. Right. That's like my biggest advice. This is assuming... That you're keeping your pants around your legs and stuff. Because I saw this meme the other day that I thought was super funny. It was like the hardest part about my pants. No, I don't take off my pants when I'm peeing. (laughs) I saw this meme the other day. I thought it was so funny. Like the hardest part of going number two at the office is putting my tie back on. It's just like (laughs) (laughs) Oh my gosh. There are people that totally disrobe. Okay, no, no, don't do that. People will see you. But also when you're in the woods. Mosquitoes and, and critters can 
get at you when you're fully disrobed. Yes. Don't <laughs> leave as many <laughs> articles of clothing on as you can when you're doing this. We totally jumped ahead because there's things that you need to do before you actually squat. Okay. 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 So this is my system. And some people may disagree with me, but I don't care. This works really well for me. And I'm the one who has the microphone in front of my mouth. So <laughs> the cardinal rule when you're peeing or pooping in the woods or outdoors, you pack out everything except for the actual waste. Right. Okay. Toilet paper, you do not leave. That is, I, the, oh, I'm getting so mad right now. That is my biggest pet peeve. It is so gross mm -hmm. to find other people's toilet paper. Right. So you do not leave your toilet paper. You always pack it out. And the other thing is you need to go like 200 feet from water. So right. if you're somewhere where you're like hiking by a stream or a lake or something, you cannot pee right there mm -hmm. <laughs> because people have to drink that water. <laughs> right. We're, we're filtering that water for ourselves while we're hiking. So right. do not do that. That's disgusting. So there's our two rules. Okay. Well, the first one in particular, like. My uncle really loves to do the Yosemite facelift. If you don't know what that is, that's the Climbing Association in Yosemite. They get a ton of volunteers together. They go to Yosemite and they clean up trash. Right. And he said that a lot of the things that they're cleaning up isn't like roadside garbage. One of the main things that they noticed when the reason that they started doing it was because of all the toilet paper in the woods. It's so gross, you guys. It's so gross. Which Do means not that you leave need your toilet to, paper. Yeah, you need to travel with Ziploc bag or something specifically for this purpose. Well, okay, so let me get into this because this, again, is going to apply more to the women than the men when it comes to peeing. But for pooping, this applies to everyone. Right. Okay, so my system is I have a gallon-sized Ziploc bag that I leave in my backpack at all times, mm -hmm. no matter what. And inside that gallon-sized Ziploc bag, I have toilet paper, hand sanitizer, smaller Ziploc bags, like just the snack size or the, anyway, the smaller ones, tampons. And I also have like the doggy waste bags so that not everything's clear, so you don't have to look at everything. <laughs> So I keep those items in a gallon Ziploc bag with me at all times in my hiking bag. Right. Now, I want to say that there has been a movement, especially among women, to get away from the toilet paper and to go towards the pee rags. Right. I think that's disgusting. <laughs> and I know that this comes uh, like... Um, what do they call them? The Kula cloth? The Kula cloths are like people will do just handkerchiefs and just like, Anyway, you can I touched use one on accident once. <laughs> I was so grossed out. Like we made friends with somebody on the trail or something Why like that. Why did you touch someone's I don't know. Bag? It was just like I was moving their bag or something because we were sitting and like eating a snack. I, I don't remember exactly the situation, probably because I blocked it out. Oh, my God. But I remember specifically like touching something and then someone telling me what it was because it was just dangle drying yes, on their bag. It dangle dries. And that's where I'm like, that's really gross to me. Our podcast manager, Emily, I think she's going to be very disappointed in me because she <laughs> likes Kula cloths. I don't use them because I don't like having what I wipe my butt with hanging on the outside of my bag. Right. I just, I that's gross to me. But I know a lot of people love them. So I'm not going to talk about using them because I don't love them, but a lot of people do. So it's an if option. you want to, it's fine. It's, it's an option. It's something people do. But I mean, my other issue with like carrying a Kula cloth or a pee rag is that doesn't help you if you have to poop. Right. Because you can't wipe with that. I mean, I guess, oh, ugh, ugh, don't. Like, <laughs> that's gross. Dry, yeah, dry that I mean, one. You just kind of need <laughs> toilet paper, right? And so, like, I might as well just carry toilet paper. The well, other... especially as a parent, when yeah, you never know true. if you're solo traveling and you're not going to have you know, your husband picking up your backpack for you and moving it around, <laughs> then maybe go ahead and it might be something worth having for yourself. But for us as parents where we had kids and you never know when they're going to need to go or what number it's going to need to be, we carry plenty of toilet paper. We carry paper. tons of toilet paper. And it's really nice to have that dark colored bag because sometimes transparency isn't the best. Yeah, but I have my system and it works really good. 
The other thing is, so I don't do Kula Claws. I don't do P-Rags. I don't use the female urinary devices that mm-hmm. like make it so that you're like a man and can stand and pee. Right. My issue with that is that then you have something that you've peed in that you now have to carry around in your backpack. Right. So you it's you, so it's really hard like when you're in the backcountry or something to have all the stuff to like clean that out before you put it away or whatever. Maybe people don't. I don't know. People are gross when it comes to sanitary stuff. And uh, Listen, so we all know that we've all been in the gas station when people just walk out of the stall and walk out. I know. Please wash without your washing hands. their hands. Oh my so, gosh! So, so, we, so this is our version of best practices. Okay. So then, now that you have the right stuff, and I've gone on my tirade of <laughs> no kula cloths. So then, while you're hiking and nature calls, then you need to find a solitary spot, right? And so you're going to go off trail and you're trying to minimize your impact as much as you can, but it's just, that's what you have to do, right? Mm -hmm. I know a lot of men will just pee off the side of the trail. That's really gross to me. Mm -hmm. I think you should walk off the trail a little bit and then do your business. For women, again, that's much harder to do because you got to find a good place to squat. You got to find a place where If you pull your pants down, people aren't going to get a full moon while (laughs) they're hiking past you. We've had so many experiences. Like, I think one was on the Highline Trail once. The Highline Trail is hard. That That one's hard to find a good place to pee. I have my spot. (laughs) There is one spot where I always pee on that trail. Because a lot of it is steep on both sides. Like you're, It's steep and there's like not a lot of trees. Right. There's there's nowhere to go off trail. Exactly. And so... We've had uh, several situations over the years, and especially on that trail, where we're hiking, you come around a bend, and there's a guy standing there saying, just wait for just a moment, <laughs> just puts his hand out like a traffic cop, but just hold on, we've got something going on up here on the trail, and then you wait for a second, and then you move out on. comes you- the woman with her toilet Thanks, paper. Babe. Yep. No problem, honey, and then everybody keeps going. It and happens. you tiptoe across wherever they were. Probably my worst experience, and this is probably TMI for so many people, but I'm just going to say it. My worst experience of trying to pee on the trail was when we were doing the Narrows in Zion. We did it in the off season, so we were in the full suits. So well, like basically they're astronaut suits. Yeah. So normally they tell you just to pee in the water. So... <laughs> Just so you know, you're hiking through everybody's pee Mm -hmm. when you're on this trail. But when you're wearing the full suit, obviously you can't do that because then you'll pee all over yourself. Right. And it won't go into the water. So you have to take off the suit and then find a place. And I also happen to be on my period at that time. And there is no privacy. Mm -hmm. There's people everywhere. There's nowhere you can go because you're in a steep canyon. And... It was the worst. I just had to hold it for like six hours. And I was going as fast as I possibly could out in the narrows. Like I was not stopping to take pictures. Mm -hmm. I was not talking to anybody. I wasn't (laughs) eating snacks. Like I was just like, I have got to get out of here because I need to get to a bathroom. She was on a mission. It was so like, and it was really sad because I was so excited to be on that trail and the bathroom stuff got in the way. and. There was just no privacy and nothing I could do. So, again, women have it worse. You had no problem with that on that trail. And it was almost my worst nightmare, honestly, to be stuck on that trail with no privacy to take care of my period stuff, plus the peeing, plus all of it. Like, it was just, it was kind of horrible. It was an apocalyptic situation. (laughs) And as a guy, I was just. Trying to be very supportive. He just hiked behind me and didn't say anything. It was like, <laughs> do not talk right now. So, Sorry about my body's advantages. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, finding a solitary spot can be very difficult. You might just have to hike a little bit further. You might have to just make someone keep watch for you. Which happens a lot on certain trails. But you find your solitary spot. And then, as I mentioned, you need to get really good at the low squat with your butt (laughs) as far away from your feet as you can. I will sometimes, like, hold on to a rock or a tree or lean up against it if the situation presents itself. Mm -hmm. 
If not, then I just squat. And before I start squatting, I get my toilet paper ready. Mm. So I will find my spot and then I will stand there and I will like tear off my pieces of toilet paper that I'm going to need at least for the first wipe or two so that I'm not just dripping and trying to stay in my squat while I'm trying to get my toilet paper out and stuff. That's not a good idea. So do all that you can before you get down in your squat. (laughs) And then you get down in your squat, you do your business, and then you have your toilet paper ready to go. And then I have my smaller Ziploc bags. If it's just pee and whatever, I'll just throw the toilet paper right in the smaller Ziploc bag. And usually I'll use that smaller Ziploc bag for a couple of uses, a couple of times going pee, and then I'll switch to another smaller Ziploc bag. And then if I went poop or if I had my period or anything like that, if I needed to dispose of anything else, first I put it in the doggy waste bag, which are usually like green and not see-through or different color and not see-through. So I'll put my stuff in there that like is just gross to see if it's in a clear plastic bag. I'll put it in there first and then I'll put it in my clear plastic bag. Right. And then I zip it all up and then I use my hand sanitizer and I'm good. And it takes like two minutes. It's awesome. Yeah. What a great system. And then I put it all back in my big Ziploc bag and throw it back in my pack and we continue on. And I've been doing that for probably... 15 years Mm -hmm. works really well for me. I have what I need. If one of my kids needs to go to the bathroom and needs some toilet paper, they get their own Ziploc bag to put their toilet paper in. Yep. So if there's multiple people that I'm carrying stuff for, sometimes I will use just a Sharpie marker and write their name on their little Ziploc bag. This is my son's Ziploc bag for his toilet paper so that I don't have to touch it in any way. Right. But it keeps it very hygienic. I feel like it's an easy system. You don't need anything special. Mm -hmm. You don't have to pay 40, 50 bucks for a pee rag that hangs on the outside of your thing. (laughs) Like it's just stuff that you already have. Plus, it's kind of out of sight, out of mind too, if it's not drying on your bag. Right. So, oh, and I forgot to mention tip. Check the slope of the ground before you start peeing. (laughs) Oh, that's a good practice. Make sure that the slope is not going to take your pee into your shoes. Right. Like as it water falls down. (laughs) (laughs) Ask me how I know. (laughs) Oh, I love it. Can I just say the bathroom stuff? My dad doesn't necessarily think I'm super duper funny, or at least he won't show it. He just kind of shakes his head at me sometimes. It's totally true. It's so funny. But I think he thinks you're funnier now. I think he's warming up to you. I think so, too. It's only been almost 40 years of of you being around. (laughs) He's so funny. But one aspect of humor that I can always get a giant laugh out of him, like red-faced, head-thrown-back type of laugh, is this type of potty humor. And it's just so funny, which is why, honestly, it's great that we're talking about the logistics and things like that. Because if you can get best practices down, it will help to eliminate some of the worst things that can happen to you. But I will say, things are still going to happen to you while you're out on the trail, (laughs) and you're still going to have stories. Oh my gosh. And so that's why like, there's always funny things. Like My dad will always laugh whenever I share a bathroom story or something like that. Just burst out laughing. Which is why I think that We have to take care of this so that we can be very clean and everything, but it's part of the whole hiking and camping experience. The bathroom stuff is so different from the indoor plumbing experience that we have normally in our life, which is why it's so interesting. And so in my mind, it's kind of like loving Michael Jackson, but also knowing that there's a bluegrass version of bad out there. Which is my favorite video of all time. (laughs) We'll link it in the show notes. Yes. It's a, there I ruined this. Yes. Or whatever. I ruined it. Oh my gosh. But what I'm saying is like that bluegrass version of bad is also part of Michael Jackson's legacy. Now that you've seen it, you can't unsee it. And so it's just like camping and hiking. Everybody has their own bathroom stories and things like that. And so it's so funny. It's just part of the experience. And yes, it's kind of gross to talk about sometimes, but also you have those great moments where you're like, I can't believe this happened. And you just burst out laughing. 
I was talking to someone the other day and they literally hold their poop the whole time they're backcountry hiking. Right. They will not poop in the backcountry. <laughs> <laughs> Which And I, I'm just like, that sounds terrible. But I know like there's a lot of like I don't know. I, I, I don't think I can do it. There's a lot of anxiety around it. There's a lot of it. that. Yeah. Yes. And so I'm so glad that you went through some of the female best practices, kind of described your system, because I do think that you're very good at the go, Ash. I am. I am. <laughs> it's a weird compliment to I've give somebody. I've been doing it a long time. You're so good at it. But I have peed on my shoes. I've peed on my pants. I've had it run down <laughs> towards my shoes because I didn't check the slope. Mm -hmm. I have had all sorts of issues. I've gotten stung by something on my butt while I was peeing. <laughs> I have had to use leaves before. Like, I've done it. Okay. I've done it, but... I don't know. I just, I have my system now. And especially with the kids, mm -hmm. as you pointed out, when you're hiking with kids, I mean, we have little boys, so it's not as big of an issue for us because boys. Can, but number you know, two is the great equalizer. And that happens with kids anytime, anywhere. We have a few stories about that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. Oh we really gosh. do. It's so, it's so good. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So in a lot of ways, this reminds me of Two things. It reminds me of a movie and it reminds me of a song. The song is You Don't Mess Around with Jim by Jim Croce. Because the chorus, it's basically just giving advice you wouldn't think you would need to give. Like you don't spit into the wind. It's <laughs> yeah. like you don't pee. You don't tug on Superman's cape. You don't slope. spit into the wind. You don't pull the mask off that old Lone Ranger and you don't mess around with Jim. So very straightforward advice you don't think you would need to give. Right. Right. But the advice may seem simple enough that you don't need to say it, but trust me, bathroom stuff can make or break your trip in a lot of ways. I just asked my brother-in-law. He just rented a trailer for the first time, and the bathroom stuff was kind of traumatic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it was traumatic for me, and we've had a trailer for a long time. Yes. And just watching him have to deal with that. Just uh, if you want an we'll idea. We'll just say it leaked. Or we'll just... It you... waterfalled. <laughs> Not in the hose. Oh, it was pretty rough. If you want a visual, type into YouTube or something, Robin Williams RV dumping scene, like when you when they have to dump the RV. That It's just, you'll get an idea about what happened, and it was it so funny. It broke his trip. Let's just say that. <laughs> it broke his trip. Oh, my gosh. But bring it back to the movie. For the younger audiences who would consider themselves greenhorns or, or people man to man. I'm thinking of the movie zombie land where if you haven't seen the movie, I know Ash hasn't seen it because it has zombies, but if you ever want to see it, if you watch it on vid angel, there may not be very much of it left. <laughs> if you leave all of the filters on, but there's a main character, Jesse Eisenberg. He's this loner guy who survives the zombie apocalypse because he's developed a set of rules that keep him out of bad situations. And so a lot of this advice, think of it as just like rules to keep you out of a bad situation. Like for him, number one is like cardio. Rule number one is cardio because zombies can't run fast and it's more important to run longer than faster. Number seven is limber up because if you're running away from a zombie and you get a cramp, you're goner. Number two is double tap. So don't be stingy with your bullets if you're not sure if it's dead. Oh know? my gosh. <laughs> but number three really relates to this situation. Rule number three in Zombieland is beware of bathrooms. Don't let them catch you with your pants down. <laughs> <laughs> so, and so, I don't know. I wanted to share. I feel like there are some best practices for the men that I'd like to share. And I'll go through them pretty quickly so that you don't have a bathroom apocalypse type of a situation. So number one is keep your wits about you especially at night when you're groggy. And this is more when you're camping because I've had, when I was a boy scout, one of the scouts got up in the middle of the night, opened up his tent, didn't walk very far, didn't keep his wits about him. And another group of scouts woke up to him peeing on their tent. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's so gross. <laughs> so gross. Uh, you mentioned this one, number two, don't pee uphill. 
Yeah, that's a really bad idea. Exactly, because it's harder to dodge a stream than you think and (laughs) dancing around. (laughs) Number three, don't pee into the wind. True. The result is not a sea breeze. (laughs) That's a little Jim Croce right there. Okay, number four, don't stand too close to what you're peeing on because it's not like a urinal. It'll The the splashing. The splash The splashing is an issue. Yes, exactly. So... What you were talking about with your shoes earlier, keep your squat kind of wide. wide, butt back. <laughs> Don't let the splashback get you. Oh my gosh. So good. Rule number five, don't pee close to your tent. Don't pee in the common areas. And so when you're hiking, this goes for the same thing. Don't pee too close to the trail because you'll regret it later or you'll regret it if other people do it because you're going to be moving through that area. You'll notice. Is if you're camping and you pee really close or in the common areas, it'll affect your sleep and you'll brush up against things and there's an aroma. Mark the perimeter of your territory, not the interior right. of your territory. Yep. This area is pee and poop free, please. Yes. My mom has this super funny story where she was a youth leader at a girls camp and they had a problem with raccoons raiding their food tent. I couldn't believe she did this. <laughs> so funny. And so she kept chasing him away, but they kept coming back. And so she was like, I had this idea. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like the nicest lady you would never expect. Oh, my gosh. But anyway, she got all of the other women leaders. And there, there were no guys. It was all the women. And she got all the women leaders together. And they all peed in cups. And they all set a perimeter. They sprinkled it around their food tent. So they <laughs> marked their territory and it worked. It worked. That's what's crazy. The raccoons did not go past the pee perimeter. <laughs> like I said, mark the perimeter, not the interior. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Number six. This is more for camping and for guys. Don't pee on the fire until your last day there. Yeah, no kidding. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) Especially don't pee on the fire if you're going to plan on using it to cook on. And as a matter of courtesy, don't pee on the fire in public campgrounds because I'll be there the next day. And if I pee on the campground, you might be there the next day. And it smells so bad. Yes. So as a matter of public courtesy in public areas, don't pee On the campfire. If you have your own fire pit in your backyard, fine. Yes. Do whatever. It's yours. But yeah, in the public campgrounds, it's really gross to like start a fire and smell somebody else's pee. There's residuals that you don't expect. You will expect the fire to take care of, but it doesn't. Now, I will say this. Do pee on a fire at least once in your life. (laughs) Because it's a it's an absolute rite of passage, and it's very fun. Just be careful of the giant steam cloud that comes up. Oh my gosh, gross. <laughs> it's hotter than you think. Anyhow, my last rule, and Ash did mention this, is don't pee in water. Or yeah, that's really. close to water. Yeah, because that's really gross. You might be filtering your drinking water from there. I might be drinking my filter water from there. So those are just... Some those are my seven rules. I just wanted to share those. Very solid rules. Those are my zombie line. I approve of all of those. <laughs> okay, perfect. What have we missed, Ash? So we haven't talked much about pooping. Okay, let's talk about pooping. A my little bit. note says same supplies, same strategy, but add a trowel. Yes. Add and a-, a little shovel and you dig down six inches. And you poop in the hole and then you cover it up. But you take your toilet paper with you. Don't bury your toilet paper. Right. That's gross. Yes. People think it's harmless because they're like, oh, I'm just burying it down in the ground too. Right. But animals will smell it and they'll dig it up. Right. And that's when you see all the poopy toilet paper everywhere. Please don't do that. You pack it out with you. But like I said, get like some doggy wag bags or whatever and put your poopy toilet paper in those so you don't have to stare at it. Right. So people don't even have to know what happened. Well, honestly, if you follow Ash's strategy here with the Ziploc bag, multiple bags inside of bags type of thing, you know, a dark, non-transparent bag, it really adds a layer of privacy to what you had to do. 
And it takes a lot of the yuck out of the situation. Should I post a picture of my gallon Ziploc bag? I think you should. Do you guys want to see what it looks like? I, I can put it on Instagram. I'll show you what it looks I like. I think the suppl- your system of supplies takes a lot of the ick out of the... I wish I had like a saying. That would have been the perfect place to have like a little <laughs> rhyming word. Takes the ick out of the whatever. Out of the go. The yuck what rhymes out of with the... Yeah. <laughs> the I don't know. Takes the no out of the go. There you go. That way you can confidently go without being grossed out, but also you don't leave something nasty behind for the next person. Because it's all about leave no trace. It really is. When you're going back into these beautiful places, you do want to leave them better than you found them. Right. And I think it's so important to like foster that type of environment for people who are outside in nature using these beautiful places. Mm -hmm. And My kids, we were at the lake this summer and they jumped into the lake and my son goes, oh, Idaho's bathroom. (laughs) I was like, oh my gosh, that's so gross. But like, you don't want all these beautiful areas to turn into like obviously somebody's bathroom. Right. And that's why I think for me, it's just like so gross to be hiking or camping and be back there and just know that, ugh obviously somebody used this place to go right this is one case where like for me ignorance is bliss right i don't want to know where you went poop right please don't show me clean it up pack it out but there are like sanitary ways to do this Mm -hmm. i don't feel gross when i have my system right i keep things really clean and i have my sanitizer and i'm good right And I, you know, and I'm leaving it better than I found it that way. too. Exactly. When you have trails, you have national parks where you have millions and millions of people using the exact same trails. You know, these types of steps are actually very important because otherwise everything just turns so gross. It does. It can get gross really fast. Right. It's just like it's the same argument people have about like tossing a an apple core or a banana peel out of their car while they're driving or something like that it's like oh it'll decompose your waste and stuff will decompose but the problem is when you have a million people throwing out apple cores you're gonna have just apple cores everywhere also side note it takes forever for food waste to decompose so don't do that right either like orange peels and stuff those last for years in some of these places so same with your bathroom habits Mm -hmm. when you're on these trails will it eventually yes do animals poop and pee in the woods yes yes but guess what they live there right that's their home that's they don't have bathrooms right i'd like like to see that like if you're in cascade canyon which we did a lot of hiking in this summer if you're in cascade canyon yes there is like a two to three moose that you will see pooping in that canyon Meanwhile, there's 100,000 people that week walking through that canyon. Yeah. And so it's just a little intense. I got on my soapbox a little bit. That wasn't as much potty humor from me. I can always count on John. Yes. To add in this stuff. But I don't know. I just, I thought I want to answer this on a podcast because it is kind of important to me. Right. Well, I think that, ladies and gentlemen, we care about your digestive system. And we don't want you to go backpacking and feel sad the whole time because uh, yeah, you true. held you held it in for five days as you did this backpacking trip. It's true. We're worried about how regular you are. We don't want you to ruin your streak or uh, your <laughs> schedule. And we want on, you- that, on that note, there is a specific member of our family that never packs enough toilet paper. <laughs> and so keep that in mind, too. If you do plan on being in the backcountry for a while, bring enough because you never know what might happen. Be realistic about how much you use. Some of the food might not agree with you eating those mountain house meals. We went backpacking once with an individual that brought only like high fiber granola bars and he went through them all on the first day of the backpacking trip. He ate, this is a different person than who I referenced before. He ate like three fiber one bars. At the beginning of our hike, and it was a four night backpacking trip, and like one fiber one bar will do it. Yeah. (laughs) That's got some serious stuff in it. And he ate three, and he was like so uncomfortable. (laughs) Right. 
or a lot of people bring a lot of dried fruit and you don't necessarily realize that's going to affect you. So this is a very important topic because we want to improve your experience while you're on the trail, while you're backpacking, while you're hiking. And these best practices, the Jim Croce rules, the Zombieland rules, Ash's strategies, hopefully we've given you the tools you need so that you only get dirt in your shoes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, gross. I think we deserve a five-star review for this episode because we were willing to go there. Right. So if you're listening on Apple, please leave us a review. We would love to hear it. Head over to the Dirt in My Shoes Instagram or Facebook page, and I will post a photo of my Ziploc bag system mm -hmm. so you can see what it looks like and you can ask any questions you might have there. We are happy to come on and answer. If you have any potty humor jokes for John, I'm sure he'd appreciate that too. So thank you for listening. And yes, I second John. Get dirt in your shoes, not other things. Mm -hmm.